Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Baka 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 Podcast. Baka. 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 It's amazing how every time you open your mouth, you prove you're an idiot. Hello, everybody, and welcome to a mini sewed of Baka Baka Baka. What's a mini sewed? That's where we talk about whatever we want. What do we normally talk about? anime episodes like we're a book club so if you want that go to the episode before this or the episode after this but right now we're doing minisode minisode is special because we think of a random topic and we beat it to death (laughs) (laughs) and today's topic was chosen by my other co-host who i will introduce he is the attack on my titan what's up jeremy (laughs) That sounds a little too that's, sweet. <laughs> that's that's pretty cool. <laughs> Isn't that cool? Or am I hitting on you? I'm not well, sure. <laughs> I'm gonna pretend that you sculpted a Titan out of clay, and you're making it very objective that way. <laughs> We're not gonna have any other references. Cool. <laughs> not like walking up to you in a bar and saying, "Hey, you want to you want to attack on <laughs> attack my Titan?" My titan. <laughs> no, no, we'll leave that alone. <laughs> then the other guy. The Yuri on my ice. What's up, Jason? I don't think there's any doubt there. <laughs> yeah. That's, Look, you know. it's my kids' favorite anime of all time. They're going crazy <laughs> about this anime. I, uh, I'm not... I mean, it looks it looks fine. Not only is it my kids, this thing is all over Twitter. This this Is this, it? We really should do this show for our podcast because it's so popular. But I, I already know that there's not enough action and that ice skating, ask. guys crying about ice skating is, is not going to I land think, with I, us. I think I'd rather do Food Wars. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wait, why wouldn't you want to do Food Wars? Well. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Those are the <laughs> options. <laughs> what are we here to talk about? We're here to talk about... Anime World. You guys already talked about Anime Worlds last time. No, those are Anime Paradise. That was our perfect anime. This time, we're taking Anime Worlds that already exist and the ones we want to live in. Our top three. And then we're going to imagine what it is like to live in those worlds. And hopefully we all survive. Hopefully Saiyans don't blow up our planets. (laughs) Uh, Jeremy, you thought of this topic. You ready for this? I'm ready. All right. Why don't you start us off with your world number three? Okay. Uh, My world number three was actually pretty hard to to pick. I picked Outlaw Star. Do you guys remember that one? I remember Outlaw Star is about a ship with hands. You got it. That's the one. (laughs) I freaking love that. Oh, it's amazing. Okay. I, I tell you right up front, the reasons why I love it are you have a multitude of planets you can go to. That's amazing. Number two, spaceships with arms, man. Spaceships with arms. They literally fight in space by punching things. It's amazing. Yeah, so help me remember. It's been a long time since I've seen this, but I do remember this anime. It's kind of Star Wars-y, but the ships actually get in, like, fist fights. Yes, they get in literal fist fights. I've never seen anything like it. Like, when you're a pilot of one of these ships... You literally have your arms in like a, a exoskeleton like controls. I mean, I think he just has joysticks, but you have to imagine they come up and have vertical movement and stuff. It's just, it's amazing. I love the concept. Also, the technology, you guys saw Iria. We watched it. It looks like it belongs in Iria. Even the gloves that the main character wears. Um, I watched a couple of trailers just to remind myself the details because it's been like 15 years or more since I've seen it. And when his hand was in the screen, I was like, oh, my God, is that Iria's hand? No, it's his. It's it's exactly the same. So the tech is amazing. They have Tao magic in the world, which his tech is able to counter. So his tech actually contains magic. So, like, the concept of this world has multiple planets. It's got space technology with crazy fist ships, and it's got magic. And you could be a bounty hunter. You could you could be just average Joe on a, on a planet. You could explore... Amazing. Can you, um, what is towel magic? Like, is that <laughs> the ability to dry things really well? You wet the towel first and you whip it and that's magic, man. <laughs> you heard of ShamWow, right? It's, it's ShamWow. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> 
Um, yeah, so the Tau magic, they have these characters, and it's just T-A-U, right? Tau. Um, oh, Tau. Yeah, there's there's no Al. L at the end, yeah. Um, it's it's crazy. They can do all kinds of stuff from enhancing their movements, doing like the, the samurai that leaps around with the sword and slices through a spaceship or slices through a column of rock or something, um, shooting blasts of energy. So where do you see yourself in this world? Do you see yourself as one of the pilots? Do you see yourself as a traveler or a, you know, delivering cargo? What? I I know they're the bad guys, kind of, but I want to go learn from the Tau Masters, man. <laughs> that looks so cool. Like, whenever I play an RPG, I'm always the mage, right? Well, here's the opportunity. Okay, so I got to wear a nasty sack with a six on the front of it or something over my head, but I got Tau Magic, man. <laughs> Okay, if I'm in this world, do I also get a ship full of hotties helping me fly it? Because I believe that was the case in our Lost Star. <laughs> oh, that was totally the case. And apparently it's very easy to get because Aisha Clan Clan, right? The cat girl. Um, there's tons of those. Those cat girls with the big pointy ears and the okay, furry bodies. You, you have convinced me. I'm in. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, if it's in Star Wars, as I remember it. I mean, who doesn't it's want pretty to cool. I'm a huge yeah. look. I have Darth Vader on my shirt right now. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, yeah. So I'm. I think I could. I could get down with that. On a serious note, I would love just being able to go and tour the planets and see all the different races because they have lizard people, they have cat people, they have all kinds of shapeshifters and crazy stuff too. And so even if I didn't get to go do something spectacular, just earn a living and go sightseeing. That'd be amazing. Crab people. They might have crab people. Talk I wouldn't like be surprised. Crab, walk like people. Okay. <laughs> crab people, crab people. Jason, let's hear your number three. Um, I would love to live in the world of Mushishi. Uh, the reason being is I find it not just a fascinating world where it's very mundane as far as... Um, I think it's post feudal Japan, so it's not samurais, war, murder, but it's like just normal life farming, um, traveling. But to be able to study and manipulate or even just live side by side with these mushi, um, would be really interesting to me. What is, what is a mushi? I, I haven't watched it yet. I'm so sorry. <laughs> No, 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 it's fine, it's fine. So, um, there's, you know, people life and animal life and plant life. Mushi are kind of like the life underneath, like, simple life. Uh, and so they take very um, amorphous forms. Uh, most of, and they don't really have a motivation. Like, they're not good or evil. Some just do very inert things. Some feed on stuff, but some are, some are very parasitic. So that's kind of where this Mushi doctor comes into play. Like there's a particular Mushi that lives inside of a person's eye and it will make them go blind. Uh, and it's just, it's afraid of light and can only be drawn out by moonlight. So like, and anyways, the, there's very a lot of different examples of that. And it's kind of goes into this metaphysical of like, we all come from the evolution of this Mushi. And it's kind of it also tied with the energy of the planet. Uh, it's it's a really fascinating. Can I have story. a Mushi as a best friend or a travel companion? <laughs> <laughs> well, considering that they don't really have consciousness as we know it, or even like animals have. I don't think you can make it. Okay, what brand. can I? Okay, Jeremy offered me cat women. What is your <laughs> mushi offering me? <laughs> There's some hot mushi out there. <laughs> Whoa. Um, <laughs> uh, so there is one in particular where that makes a silk, and you can actually have instant travel. So like you'll you'll get two of them from this one mushi. And no matter how far away you are, if you like put, if you write a note on a piece of paper and you stick it in this thing, the person with the other one, no matter how far away, can then pull that piece of paper out 
and oh that's cool does yeah. anyone have access to these mushi or are they only specific people so only certain people can see them but everyone is influenced or affected by them do you need a beard to see them a good beard. <laughs> There's women that see it that are beardless. So okay, wait, <laughs> is that just how they're drawn? <laughs> so what about the parasitic ones? What's what's the chances of you getting an infection or some kind of parasitic mushi? So apparently the parasitic ones are fairly uh, rare, um, hmm. and they don't they don't happen. That that's why mushi are so. Uh, the, the, because they, people can't see them. Most people don't even know they exist. So until it becomes a problem, uh, most people don't even know that they are, are, are a problem. Thing. Right. Mm -hmm. um, like there's there's one that will attract other mushi to it to like create this ball of uh, mushi that feeds mm. off sunlight. But unfortunately, that will also block out the sun for a very large area. So the only way to stop that one is you got to find this route. Well, the the thing is, like, this guy has to convince these town people, A, Mushi exists, and B, they need to go digging for this route that they won't be able to see. They can only, oh, like, they have signs that it could be in an area. So, it, you know, it, it's stuff like that. Interesting. Say, so do you see yourself as like how would you learn to be a mushi she? Because I imagine that you'd want to be able to see them and interact with them. What would be your path to actually do that? Um, a, I would be a person that could see them because those are fairly rare. Um, mm. B, I would like to be similar to the main character where I could like mm. be on his team as far as like a doctor helping people because that's attractive to me. I would want to. I want to be able to travel and meet people and help people with their problems. Cool, cool. Uh, as much as I would love to live in older Japan, um, I think I'm gonna go with the cat women. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I love older, you know, the farming life. That sounds very peaceful, and it sounds like some of the mushi could be really cool. But I, I don't know if that's that sold me on it, though. I could see it as a vacation place where I'd want to go to relax. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yep. <laughs> we don't even need to talk about this. Uh, my <laughs> third world is Kaijo. You know, what? I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> Look, I watched more Kaijo today. <laughs> that anime is awful. He's not watching it, and I'm so I'm pretty sure the sport would be popular. <laughs> so, I, so where do you see yourself? Oh, I'm just I'm just at home watching TV. <laughs> I love the Denver Broncos playing football. <laughs> I don't, so, I don't it's, go and practice with them. Oh, God, that's great. On, on Reddit, there was a great thread of like the differences between the manga and the show. The manga is so much more dirty. Really? Because really? the, the show every once in a while just crosses the line real quick. Oh, no, no, no. no. Do you like the, get up and clap and cheer? <laughs> yeah. The, the manga crosses the line and then just dances over there for a while. Oh my God. Yeah. I, I want to add one stipulation to my <laughs> Kaijo world because I am a person who believes that everything should be equal. There has to be a male Kaijo where men just wear G strings <laughs> and smack each other in their face with their crotch. <laughs> I'm not watching that sport, but I want it to be there for other to be able to watch That's while equality, I watch man. Kaijo. Yeah. It's a quality. <laughs> and, and, Inspired by Yuri on Ice, it should be on ice for the men. <laughs> there you go. Uh, I have two words. I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> Look, that's on ESPN two. We'll watch Kaijo on ESPN one. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. So, wow. Okay, so, do you, would you ever buy tickets? I mean, to is go see really live a, Kaijo? Is there really anything to question me about? There's, there's got to be. There's gotta <laughs> you know what's right? Is. There's no. There's no, no <laughs> pay per view. <laughs> I'm trying to find a kernel of something valuable here. <laughs> uh, would you encourage your wife to enter competition? There you go. No, that looks painful, man. That looks painful. <laughs> that looks like the most painful sport ever invented. Oh, God, uh, that's funny. I, would I even feel comfortable going to a high school game? <laughs> that would be so awkward. <laughs> oh, my I'm God. I'm enjoying this. And, uh, I shouldn't be enjoying this. I think I'll go watch the college games. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> they said she's only 16. Oh, oh crap. <laughs> how, how, however, 
it would be cool to watch any sport where they have special abilities. So as a sport anime, the, the battles in Kaiju are actually not that bad. <laughs> they have special abilities. They they do butt blast look. It's weird. <laughs> it's so weird. <laughs> Oh, actually, we, does that, everyone know what Kaijo is? If you're listening, Kaijo is I think you should describe it. sport anime where <laughs> women compete in a, it's like sumo wrestling. They're in a pool on, on a, on a floating ring and they hit each other, but you can only hit each other with your breast or your butt. And you try to knock the other women down or in the water. And, and that's their sport, but they, they make it like a fighting anime. <laughs> That's a, look, I've I've sold it. You're all coming with me, you know. <laughs> look, can we move on? Nothing will kill it's you. Another vein. Nothing it's another will hurt you. World. You don't have to watch it if you don't want to. You just turn on ESPN and watch Kaijo if you want. My world's perfectly safe. You're not gonna get anything in your eye. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, you might. <laughs> okay, uh, Jeremy, let's go to World Two. <laughs> all right. Um, World 2 is My Hero Academia. So speaking of sports, I love the idea behind My World Academia. I know that I have argued for it being a dystopian world, and I'm totally okay with that. Um, I love The pivotal thing here is the 80%. The fact that 80% have a power of some kind means I got really good odds to be unusual somehow and find a use for it. Something interesting. So I don't know what it would be. But it'd what be interesting have, to explore. What if you have tape coming out of your elbows? I'd be really sad. <laughs> I'd be like, why did I choose this? <laughs> I, I actually, hope I didn't remember choosing it. <laughs> I actually considered this world, but it seemed a little too dangerous for me. I, I was going for safe, just so you know. I don't want to die. <laughs> yeah, what if you're the 20%? <laughs> Yeah, well, I would hope that there's some kind of like protection in place for, for the 20%. If I was the 20%, I'd probably be like, okay... There's got to be some kind of magical sci-fi ability that will get me some kind of tech power or something. You know, suits. I don't know. There's this guy you can eat his hair. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Stick it. You know, I hate that. That's the one thing I hate about beards. <sighs> um. Okay, so let's say you're in this world and you get your power. Are you going to school to become a superhero? Or are you just going to live a regular life with a cool power? Hmm. I think I'd be trying to go to school. If it's a dystopia and I'm not allowed to use it unless I'm at school, I'm going to be pushing for that school scholarship, pushing hard. Because I want to use it. It's crap if I can't use it. I'd, I'd be sneaking around using it. I'd probably be a villain at that point because I'd be like, you can't stop me, man. I got tape. Of all, <laughs> of all the worlds to be a villain in, that could actually be the most fun world to be a villain in. Yeah, that'd be fun. Jason, are you going to that world? Yeah. Is it worth the risk to your life? It depends on if I was part of the 80 or 20. If I was part of the 80, um, I, I mean, you're, roll you're rolling dice. dice. You go to this oh, yeah, world yeah, and you're rolling the dice and <laughs> you have an 80% yep. chance of getting a superpower. Yeah, because my superpower could be, you know, a hair that comes out of my nose and I can scratch my back with it. Like, it Awesome. Could... <laughs> you, you just sold me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in, man. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I mean, it, it I, I would def, I would definitely roll the dice. Yeah, but unfortunately, you would ha it would be like a critical check. You'd have to roll twice, like roll once. Do you get a power? And then you would have to roll. Oh. Okay, which power do I get? Exactly. Is it crap? Yeah, well, I think it's worth the shot. The only thing I'm worried about <laughs> is the villains do run rampant. It's almost it's not quite as bad as One Piece Man or One Punch Man. <laughs> <laughs> one piece man one piece man uh, <laughs> on one punch man the villains come they swing their hand and an entire city disappears yeah a and then the superheroes come in and save it's not that bad but still like a, a villain walks by and like two city blocks are destroyed i, I want to see the fatality rates in this world before i i make the jump whether i'm a hero or not Guys, I don't want to die in my animal world. That's not a goal. <laughs> yeah, I think there. Are, I mean, I'm willing to make roll the dice, but there. If I could have a caveat, I would take the caveat that like I don't okay. die. <laughs> Jason, what's your second world? Uh, my second world is ReZero, uh, and the reason is is because I've always wanted 
to like it, you know, if I was going to be in a fantasy world, I would want to be in one where a, I would be able to use magic and b study under somebody that could, that was a master with said magic and then be able to use it for good. Um, and I think this would be a perfect world for that. Uh, because there are academies, there are kingdoms set up for that type of study and that type of mastery. And, uh, uh, so, A, it, my prerequisite to go to that world is I would need to be a magic user and be uh, at least enough clout that I could get into one of these uh, organizations. You are going to have such a hard time selling me on this world. Talk about not wanting to die. This world is, <laughs> you know how easy it is to die in that world? <laughs> yeah, yep. Um you know, I get the impression that all the characters in that world have magic in one way or another because they all have like that soul gate, right? So right. which which element would you pick if you could pick? Fire. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Everything, everything was peaceful in ReZero until Jesus. <laughs> 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 Thanks for roaring on the podcast. <laughs> yeah, I missed no you doing problem. that. <laughs> Sorry, I just really got into it. Now, I also have a sneaking suspicion that, Jason, you're just going there to try and steal Ram away from Subaru. Is that is that what's really going on I, here? I have no prerequisites of meeting any of the main characters. In fact, I couldn't care less about any okay. of them. Um, okay. My only goal is to study magic. That's cool. How, how involved are you getting in this world politically? I'm not. not. I, I not Like I said, I would want... I want to be able to study magic and I'd want to be able to study under someone that's really powerful. So if that meant studying under, uh, what's his face that owns the mansion clown guy or yeah, yeah. Clown guy Kefka, or Kefka <laughs> yeah, right. or Beatrice or anybody from, um, one of the other houses, you know, just some sort of master of magic in their realm. Uh, I would, that's what would sell me. Okay. Uh, so my second world is Pokemon. Look, I know it's a kids anime. I know it's just based off of a kid. Dude, dude, uh, you, I don't don't have, you don't have to just, you don't have to justify oh, that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I consider that one. <laughs> look, Pokemon, y you're 10 years old forever if you want, apparently. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> but That's it doesn't cool. matter who you are. You get to go on a Pokemon journey and but honestly, you know what I want to do in this world? I want to establish my own gang. I can do better than Team Rock. Those guys <laughs> yeah, are so exactly. awful. I feel like anyone with a mind for organized crime is going to make a killing in Pokemon World. Yep. Okay, so uh, are there any prerequisites for what Pokemon you come into the world with, or do you start with nothing? Uh, do I, I? Okay, so I'm assuming I'm born into this world. I'm, I'm raised till I'm 10, and then I go to a professor, and he's giving me a starter, and I'm picking the leaf one because I always do. Yo, and that's, the first time you, <laughs> that's the first time you met your dad. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so wait, workforce starts at ten years old. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. That, that's when you start your Pokemon journey. Huh. Yep. Right. And, yeah. and and look, basically everybody's able to become a master in this world, and legendaries are everywhere. Guys, I could capture God. Or the devil. I, I could get both I and I could rule the world. You could get more than one of them too, couldn't you? No, I, I think there's only one legendary. So, really? So when, oh. dur when during the timeline do you turn 10? Uh, what do you mean? So, do you start when before battles were even a thing? Like, back mm -hmm. before Mew 2 was born? Or are you like now where there's like, you know, black and white? And yeah, I, I want and... the full experience. I'll, I want to, I mean, I'd be fine starting anywhere between red and blue when we're talking oh, about the okay. games. So, but... so, well, it's, it's, it's a specific timeline too. I mean, you're, you're talking about what Pokemon are available. Okay, but we are talking about the anime and they're not aging. No, no, no. <laughs> but, right. But there was a time period before sanctioned fights. No, I, I want, I want the full, I want the gym battles. I want the full experience. Okay, I, I'm, I'm entering everything. Like it's, it's gonna be great, guys. It's gonna be great. What Me would your gang be like? What, what would, what would your goal be? 
Oh, uh, to get a, a legendary Pokemon and take over the world. Oh, so, so <laughs> I think that's really, really. of them. Okay, okay. I can and see look, that. You know, am I introducing guns into this world <laughs> and, and just <laughs> mean everything? Oh no, you have a Zubat. Get the AK. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome yeah 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 i'd do that i'd go there it's it's a non-lethal world where everybody gets to be involved uh quick question for you uh this is more of a theory question uh, is basically everything a pokemon in that world that so like what i mean by that is <laughs> small like less sophisticated pokemon evolve into higher forms of Pokemon, and then eventually turn into humans. Therefore, humans are also Pokemon. You won't know unless you throw a Pokeball at a human (laughs) and see if it catches them. Is that even legal? (laughs) No, but my gang's going to do it anyway. That's how we took over the world. We're the only gang willing to to cross this line. (laughs) Why would you not? (laughs) Look, I I caught the president of this country in my Pokeball. I am now the ruler of this country. (laughs) What would you... but would you like you? You'd be training him, right? You'd throw him out and train him. And what would you? What no, would no, you okay, I, him again? I am not treating the humans as Pokemon. I'm using the Pokeballs as kidnapping devices. Let's let's move on to our number one worlds, guys. Jeremy, oh, you're, what's your number one world? Okay, my number one world is kind of a cop out. It's Sword Art Sword Art Online between the two seasons. Okay. Now- now, are you talking about the world where they just have really cool video games, or are you talking about the world in the world of the show? I'm talking about the uh, the world where they have cool video games, but it's at the point where they have unlocked that seed that has created an exponential growth where there's all of these worlds that have popped up that are VR, mm-hmm. and every one of them is different. And that's the point in time I'd want to be in where, like, I get to go into whichever world I want. Some are fantasy, some are space, some are crazy, some are horror. And know that unless some really weird freak accident happens, I'm probably not going to get trapped in it. But I can still enjoy an absolutely insane experience that is probably not going to be in my lifetime, in a normal lifetime here right now that I would be able to experience. And otherwise would be a normal place. That's fair. Uh Who's making these MMOs? What real life game companies are making the MMOs you're playing? Oh, oh or are they just yeah. indies? Uh, okay, Bethesda, of course. Bethesda and Blizzard both. Yes, big time. Um, I would love to experience some kind of game from uh, Square Enix. Uh, also, uh, no, you wouldn't. No. <laughs> oh, I, I would. I would. I totally would. Oh man, if I could be in like a Final Fantasy game that they that so, they made. So you're telling VR, me, oh, that'd be cool. So you're telling me you'd put on the VR. And then in your VR, you get in a car, and next to you is a shirtless guy. Well, I'd hope that they have, have improved it beyond that. You know, <laughs> if they're going to have. I'm a- going to that world for <laughs> sure <laughs> in an instant, and I'm taking off my shirt right next to him. Let's drive, and then, <laughs> Let's drive. And then he'll turn to you and say, "Is that your casual?" <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's right. Um, and let's see, the other big one would be um, Bioware. Bioware games would be another big one. Now. How many crappy fetch quests are there in this VR world? Oh, oh, I won't play cr- uh, fetch quest crap. Uh, uh-uh. uh. If I if I get a fetch quest, I'll be like, I'm out of this world. Uh, uh-uh. uh. I'll probably try to kill the person giving me a fetch quest first, and then I'll leave. <laughs> now, obviously, these games come with risk. Are you, are you okay with that? Are you okay with getting stuck in Skyrim forever? That sounds kind of cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I like that. Well, Jason's <laughs> already stuck in Skyrim forever. I know, I'm, I'm specifically <laughs> speaking to you. <laughs> um, well, I mean, if if I was stuck in Skyrim forever, but Skyrim was sufficiently advanced so that it was more like the Sword Art Online world, or or even um, or even like some of the other worlds that came later, like I know that in Sword Art Online two, the world was even a little bit more advanced than that, but it was guns and stuff. Um, if, if it was a, a Skyrim that was analogous to those in level of quality and detail, yeah, that'd be pretty cool. And you could mod I'd on miss... the fly. Oh, heck yeah. Make my own levels, make my own uh, follower. Yeah. Wow. I said it's not possible, but I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure, the mer- sure the main character's mod uh, in, that, in that show. Because <laughs> they have the, the daughter, the little fairy daughter AI, and she just oh, mods yeah. the game whenever they get in trouble. <laughs> 
I'd, I'd search for her. I'd be searching for her. That's what I'd be doing. I'd be like, I heard the story about this this thing that can mod stuff. I need to be modded. Yeah. Jason, you go into this world? Yeah, I'd go. Uh, only if there's a PlayStation version. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, race. you get to be in the world, but you have to carry your little controller around everywhere inside I'm, the I'm world. I'm assuming the one they got stuck in was Xbox. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> damn! <laughs> okay, Jason, uh, your number one world, uh, DBZ, and no, that's a horrible choice. <laughs> <laughs> I was using it as an example earlier. Uh, I assumed it was so bad. <laughs> Let, let me let me let me tell you okay. my reason. I'm sorry. Now, now the, <laughs> the reason the reasoning is I wouldn't need to meet any of the Z fighters. I wouldn't need to meet any of the gods. Um, I love the idea of a world where you can control your own energy to do superhuman things. But I also like the idea that there is no limit on your power if you're able to put enough training into it, if you're able to put enough tenacity into it. Um, and I just, I like the idea of being able to do martial arts in a superhuman way. I would like to do martial arts in a human way. <laughs> yeah, I'd like to be able to do martial arts be... at all. <laughs> yeah, that would be amazing. You, you say there's no limit, but Krillin begs the differ. <laughs> I guess Krillin. it's relative, right? <laughs> Krillin gets stronger every season. Not anymore. He's done. He's like, all right, tap out. I can't. I can't get any better. Well, it, well, I mean, when you have a cyborg wife that doesn't age, I mean, yeah, yeah you can't get any better than that, right? She's human now, right? What? Yeah, they would, they oh, wish that's her, right. They, they wish, wish her humor. That's right. Age, she I had a baby. And, yeah. Right. But she was so cool as a cyborg. She's still strong. I think she kept her power level. But, oh, because that makes sense. Yeah, why not? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's go. Um, what planet are you living on? Namek, right? <laughs> ah, that's a, that's the a... one human on Namek. There's no food on Namek. There's nothing to eat. <laughs> um, You'd have to eat the Namekians. Which, I like... mean, okay, Earth seems the <laughs> obvious choice, but that world is threatened to blow up like oh, every week. Like every yeah, but week. we have. Yeah, but I have Goku, so I don't have to worry about it. Um, no, no, I, no, no. The Earth, you live, the Earth has been destroyed like five times under Goku's watch. He just brings it back, like right. <laughs> and, and it's like being brought back. You don't have any memory of the destruction, so it's fine. Okay. You get to be Subaru, except you don't remember. Yeah, That's you're, great. you're signing up for constant death. <laughs> well, and also like. Not only does, is Goku going to have to, or not have to, but he deals with all the tragedy and, and, and bad guys. That way I can just focus on myself and my my journey. No, no, because every third Tuesday of the month, he's asking for spirit <laughs> energy. And you need to take an off day. Like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, whatever. Oh. Make your spirit ball. Here you go, buddy. <laughs> hey, somebody's got to provide the energy, all right? That's great. You know, I can I can see your argument though for the uh, being able. What other world could you get into where you can fly? Right, like anybody who trains hard enough could fly. Exactly. I do like that. That I'll, is really. I'll cool. give you that. I, when I said this is a ter- terrible choice, you did actually provide some good. Yeah. For it. Yeah, I, I'll give you that. Um, I would be in it with the caveat that I would want to come into it roughly at the time when Goku's a little kid. Because it seems like the threats to the world are not to destroy it at that time so much as to destroy like little zones and areas, right? Like the Red Ribbon Army wasn't as, as Army. world de- – yeah, it wasn't as world destroying as Frieza or Cell or yeah, Boo. Pic- Pic- Piccolo didn't want to destroy the world. He just wanted to no. rule. That's yes, I'd, that would <laughs> be my caveat. I'd be like, <laughs> let me in at this time period because there's no real threats that are probably going to take me out. Also, the other thing I love about the world is – you can go buy the pill about this size, throw it on the ground, you have a house. Oh, yeah. That's yeah, actually super that's, awesome. that's, that's a really good point. Yeah, that's really cool. <laughs> like, there is a company that sells affordable cars in the size of a credit card. Yep. <laughs> that's very cool. You, you get on that world soon enough and you invest in Capsule Corp, you are Dude, set for life. Right? Oh, yeah. And space travel. You got space travel in Capsule Corp, too. You'd be richer than freaking Mr. Satan. 
Like, yeah, that's awesome. So my final world is is Naruto. <laughs> so as much crap as I gave you about Dragon Ball Z, that I turned Hold up. Pick whoa, it. whoa, whoa, whoa! Yeah, turn about fair play, man. <laughs> right? Okay, let's let's hear this. Okay, uh, because again, I'm assuming I'm the average citizen. Every single person in the Naruto world goes to ninja school and learns to use their shock chakra to walk on water, walk on trees. Uh, run through trees with only having to step like every 10 trees <laughs> and fly through the forest and throw kunai. And like, that's all basic stuff. I honestly don't know where the villagers in Naruto are coming from. Yeah, if that's everyone, what I was ask. everyone goes to ninja school, yeah. but that's not, that's not my worry. <laughs> <laughs> You're just not one of those, <laughs> but you are under threat of like being sent on a mission to your death. Like well, at any no, no, moment, look, I'm going to Ninja Elementary. I'm learning basic ninja stuff, and then I'm just going to go live a normal life. But I'm able to walk on water and walk can, up a tree. <laughs> can you leave the school and not continue on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. You, you can. You have to go to Ninja High School, and <laughs> I don't think you have to because if, if you don't pass the exams, you definitely can't go on. And I just, I'll be like, I ain't taking that. That's that's crazy. People die in this exam. Why are you <laughs> sending us ten year olds to do this? <laughs> insane um, i love i just love the terminology ninja grade school ninja high school <laughs> ninja college i just love that that's fantastic um uh, wow there are extinction level events <laughs> oh, there? in this world there, there's a lot of war uh which is kind of a bummer not I'm not a big fan of that. <laughs> I'm not a big fan of Hulk constantly being killed. Yeah, the the world seems almost as bad, if not worse, than DBZ without the Dragon Balls to bring your planet back. Yeah, okay, so everyone in the village has been killed and then brought back to life. That has happened. Wait, spoiler. what? Yeah. <gasps> yeah, <Look>. spoiler alert. <laughs> it's a long time ago now, but yes, that does happen. <laughs> Oh, oh my gosh! Um, oh look, guys, I can you, walk up a tree. But you wouldn't have the you wouldn't have the training to survive that. So you'd definitely be one of those dead people. Oh yeah, I'm not. I'm not being a ninja. That's scary as heck. You just want to be able to walk on trees. I just want to be able to walk on a tree and throw kunai. Cool okay, okay. You know, it's that, and and uh, you know, transformations. Naruto was doing transformations in elementary school to to into stuff that'd be cool so would you have like some weird god spirit inside you too or oh, i hope not that seems awful <laughs> isn't that what gave fueled his transformations though no no that it was a basic thing because he taught it to another elementary school kid oh, who's able okay. to do it too so yeah that that is basic technique that an, that i could learn that as an elementary sad. kid so that would be sweet, like, you know, hmm. a teacher comes across to you and is like, hey, did you do this bad thing over here? And you're like, Substit <laughs> substitution jutsu. <laughs> yeah, Free there now, a little stump. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. That's great. Okay. And, and, it's, and it I, seems interesting. Yeah. <laughs> it's dangerous. <laughs> it does. Look, I don't know if I'm convinced that the risk reward is balanced right for me yet. Yeah, uh, yeah, I, I think it's right up there with My Hero Academia. I, I just think My Hero Academia hasn't I presented how that. dangerous that world can be yet. I think we'll get our extinction level event there. You're probably right. Okay, and look, the big the thing about My Hero Academia is like not everyone gets to go to superhero high school. In Naruto, mm. they have to teach me the basic stuff. Absolutely, they have to teach it to me. <laughs> and then I can go on my way and do what I want with my special powers. Be because I was thinking about One Punch Man's world, where there's a very large amount of superheroes. But the same concerns I have about the Naruto world, I have about the One Punch Man world. Like, the giant dude that's just walking through cities and just killing people left and right. It's like... I could just be sitting in one of those houses and an enormous <laughs> foot comes and kills me. Also, yeah. they have great ramen there, apparently. Apparently. <laughs> oh, you've sold me. <laughs> Thanks <laughs> up for all of it. <laughs> okay, yeah. guys, that is our mini so unless you have any final thoughts, uh, my final thought is One Punch Man would be the worst world. <laughs> the superheroes <laughs> do not save enough people in time. Oh, God, Entire yes. cities just go. <laughs> right. Yes. I, I do have one like honorable mention 
Oh, I think right. um, what it, uh, is it? Uh, vampire plus rosary. Rosario Vampire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> if I could go to that monster high school, that'd be pretty neat. <laughs> you're assuming you're gonna get the girls to like you, right? No, <laughs> no. Just a. Uh, Are you a human? No, no. I'd be a monster of some kind. Okay, okay. if you're a monster, I think <laughs> you're I assumed you were going as a human. I'm like that sounds awful. <laughs> They're gonna <laughs> kill you. <laughs> right. Guys, th- those were our top three worlds plus a bonus one. We would love to hear yours, and you can throw in as many bonus ones as you want. Uh, also, yeah. tell us why ours were horrible or awesome. <laughs> uh, you can reach us on Twitter at Baca Podcast, or you can email us at the Anime Baca Club at gmail.com, or you can leave a comment wherever you found this mini sode. We are watching The Boy and the Beast, the movie, for our next episode, and I hope you're enjoying your holiday break or enjoyed your holiday break. Look, I'm not quite sure when these come out. It's fine. <laughs> Enjoy your holidays. We still have jingle bells. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone say goodnight. All right, bye. See you in the next episode. Sayonara. <laughs>